everyone. This is Leslie with Color Art. Um, we're going to do some paint mixing with the Primary Element Artist Pigments. Um, Primary Element Art Pigments are pure ground color that we have hand blended and added bits and pieces of sparkles with mica and some other minerals. They are not mica pigments even though they do contain some mica. I wanted you to see the label there. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions from customers who recently purchased quite a few of these pigments. We've been recently discovered by the paint porn community and I wanted to uh, answer that call by seeing if I couldn't give you some, sorry for fixing the camera there, see if I can give you some insight on what I'm doing. Now in these four little salsa cups, and I get these salsa cups from my restaurant supply here in California, they're smart and final. Most towns have some kind of restaurant supply where your restaurants can get napkins and cups and maybe bulk 50 pound pegs of carrots and coffee cups and coffee stirrers. So I get my salsa cups from Smart and Final. Um, I get all the sizes. I think this is three and a half ounce. Three and a half ounce. This is uh, a little eight ounce. It might be something you might get a little takeout schmear in from your local bagel shop. Um, we also have a larger size, which is a 16 ounce cup. And look at the different sizes here that I've got. Okay. And they even make a 32 ounce, which I happen to have my Vivid Clear Enamel stored in. Yes, my container's not pretty. You can tell that I recycle and everything I'm using is well loved. Um, and what's cool about that, with the exception of the little cup, is the lids are universal. So this, the same lid will fit the 16, that fits the 8, that also fits the 32. That's a nice little tip. You can get them in um, tubes, long tubes. I think this is 125 cups. They're real handy and real cheap. So these also come with a little lid that fits them. So any leftover paint you can save and use them for your next project, pour, painting, whatever you're going to do with the paints that you're mixing, okay? So one of the colors that I get asked about the most is the reds and the dark browns. The reason being is when we're mixing our colors and when you mix a red, the public want a real juicy dark red. The problem with adding mica to a red is if you use interference gold, it's going to turn the red orange. If you use interference red, it's going to turn it pink. So we use a minimum amount of the, the mica in there to give them just a little bit of bling but maintain that rich color of red. But a lot of people are concerned with how, how coarse they are. Now this particular cup, I have about half the amount that I would normally put in. These have about a tablespoon. This is about a teaspoon and a half. Let me get these other cups out of the way. I've got my little eighth of a teaspoon here. It's heaping eighth teaspoon of the hot cinnamon. Now, one little trick, if you pour your medium in first, then you put your pigments on top, you're not going to feel like you're scraping up pigments from the bottom of the cup as you're mixing. And paint manufacturers actually mix, <clears throat> sorry, in what's called the rule of thirds. Um, let's say you're making a big batch. Uh, you'll, you might put a third of the medium in, a third of the acrylic binder, and this is a high polymer medium. Put in your color, mix it well, put in another third of the medium, mix it well, and then add the final third of the medium. Of course, these guys are mixing five, 10, and 50 gallon batches. They're not using little salsa cups like we are. But there are some folks that have contacted me saying they're having problems getting the red to break down. So I wanna show you just how easy this is. So. I've got my Vivid Clear Enamel. Yes, I didn't show you the bottle. We've got the Vivid Clear Enamel, which is also by Color Art. It's a uh, high film strength enamel. And I'm just going to start mixing. 
but it's not going to dissolve like instant coffee. It's not like a couple stirs and it's done. I'm going to actually work around the edges and get the grains broken down in the medium. Now, as I said a little bit earlier, if we put in the interference gold, it turns it orange. If we put in the interference red, it makes it pink. So why does that matter? Well, the less mica that we put in our hand ground color, the coarser and the crunchier the pigment would be. But I decided to, you know, weigh the difference and say, well, if they can get them a bright, juicy red, I guess that's a good trade-off for, you know, having to take a few extra minutes to mix it. Okay, this is getting pretty smooth and creamy. Let me see if I can get an even better close-up on this. So you can see this. The Vivid Clear Enamel is very viscous. I had one lady ask me if it was like mayonnaise. My apologies if I don't remember your name, honey. I remember calling her on the phone and saying, yeah, it's supposed to be thick because this has body. See, it's, it's got body to it. It's going to feel like a thick mayonnaise. It is an enamel. The, working and working in this, I've got this pretty much mixed up. And like I said earlier, if you put your medium on the bottom first, then add your color, and maybe it's psychological for me, but I'm not going to feel like I'm constantly scraping up the pigments from the bottom of the salsa cup and feeling like I've left some color behind. I just want you to see the close-up of this. See how thick that is. It is really, really, really thick. It's not even stirring. Sorry, I don't have a side camera. But you see it's barely moving off of there. So what do I do next? Well, call me crazy, but I use water. Um, as a paint manufacturer, I know that when we're buying the giant drums of the acrylic polymers, uh, we will, it's called letting them down by adding a little bit of water to them. So I know we can add water to them. Finished paints by manufacturers will tell you no more than 30% water to guarantee adhesion to the surface. And a little tip, most paint pourers don't go beyond 25% water. I just call it the safety zone is you want to be sure that if you're going to make this beautiful, glorious painting, that it's going to be able to stay on the canvas that you're applying it to. Now, if you're someone who likes to use pouring medium, I will recommend Liquitex pouring medium as the number one pouring medium to put in this. Um, I've tried Floetrol. Floetrol uh, was a material that's used by house painters that uh, we ran out to get when there was an international shortage of pouring medium, but even the Floetrol company says this is not designed to really be used with artist paint um, for several reasons. It was really designed for house paint. I know that there are some wonderful custom blends that uh, many artists out there that are using, and I respect those recipes. They're wonderful, but they're a mixed recipe. They're using Floetrol. They're using a little bit of pouring medium. They're using PVA glue. They're using water. Just straight Floetrol, you risk uh, the dirty pour or the colors that you're using breaking down. Now, why is that? And I'm sorry I wasn't going to get into the discussion of Floetrol, but I think this is really important. Floetrol is a brush conditioner, a paint conditioner. It's supposed to make it so you don't see the brush strokes, and it has a very strong chemical that acts as a surfactant that breaks down the surface tension of the paint. So you increase your drying time and a painter can paint the wall of the house, it can go on smoothly, and they're going to have a little bit more open time. But why would that be bad in a dirty pour? Or why would that be bad in painting in general? Well in a dirty pour you're mixing multiple colors together in a cup that all have different surface tension. Surface tension is the tension that the acrylic has when it dries on the surface. And by adding Floetrol, and I've seen somebody use massive amounts, 50%, 70% Floetrol, you basically have flattened down any surface tension. And when you get those beautiful cells, let's just say 99, 99 might be high, but 90% of the time, you're gonna lose your cells. So my recommendation, personal recommendation is, 
don't use Floetrol alone. If you're going to use this as part of an extender, use it in a mix with the pouring medium, the PVA glue, the water. Um, and Marie Ritterhoff has one of the best recipes out there. I recommend that you look into her recipe. I know she offers that recipe on some of her YouTube videos. Now, just for grins and giggles, for those of you that are die-hard uh, pouring medium, when I say a dash, that's a dash. Just a little dash. Now, why do, for you beginners, why do people want to use a pouring medium at all? Like I said, I only use water. But the pouring medium is an insurance policy. If you add too much water, and it could possibly risk lifting, cracking, or it's a term called crazing, okay, the pouring medium is an insurance policy that's not going to happen. You should always put your pouring medium in directly with the acrylic polymer that you've mixed your color in or directly into the tooth paint. If you're going to use paint out of the tube, you also want to put in your um, pouring medium first before you introduce your water. Now why is that? Because you want to give the polymer and the pouring medium a chance to bind, okay? You want them to bind to begin with. Then when you add your water, you're adding your water to one substance. Now this is absolutely beautiful. There are no grains of red left in there. Yes, I've mixed it for quite a while, but I think the color makes it worthwhile. One more tip on Floetrol I forgot to tell you. Um, Floetrol also has a matting agent in it. It mats out um, the color that it's mixed in. Now why would that matter with the primer elements? Because we like our colors to be sparkly and bright and we certainly don't want anything to mat out this gorgeous, glorious red. I guess that's my new word for the day, glorious. So I have a water bottle here which has a little uh, dropper top on this. You can also see that my bottle is well loved and I'm just adding a few drops at a time. Now, sorry to get preachy here, but each polymer base, each color, has a different ability to absorb water at a different rate. And when I say absorb water, I mean it absorbs the water, it receives the water, it swells, and then it thickens up again. And you have to add a little bit more water and mix it. I don't care if you've made a color a dozen times and you know you're going to end up using two tablespoons of water in your final mix. Do not, let me repeat again, do not put all the water in at once. You need to be able to mix in the water, let the product receive the water, your mix receive the water, add a little bit more water at a time so the acrylic polymer and the color can swell evenly, okay? I can't stress that enough. There's, there is no shortcut for this process. You might as well just embrace it. Consider, consider mixing the paint your Zen moment of the day. Take all your cares away from the day and zen out while you're mixing now. If we can get a close-up, I'm not how, sure how much we can get a close-up of this, but the color is pouring off nice and evenly. I really just can't get a side view of this. It's still coating the stir stick, but it's pouring off evenly. You don't want it to pour off, break the pour, and then pour again. I call it the clump clump. You want it to come smoothly off the popsicle stick in an even flow. I think this can have just a couple more drops of water. There you have it. We've made a beautiful hot cinnamon red and this is ready to go on the piece. By the way, I'll do a video um, after this. This is going to be paint mixing and I will do a video with these colors next or at least a couple of these colors. Uh, <clears throat> Next color, next color I'm going to mix is cinnamon brown. Now our browns, same story. Uh, maybe they're not a pure red where I have to worry about the gold or 
interference gold or the interference red, but still to maintain a dark juicy brown. They don't necessarily have as much mica in them, so some of our browns may be coarser than others, others may not. So here is my hot cinnamon. It's a kind of a coarse, coarse pigment. It's not ultra fine like face powder. I'm going to put in a heaping eighth of a teaspoon into my tablespoon of Vivid Clear Enamel. And let's just mix. Let's just start mixing that color up. I said in my intro, uh, you know, we, we always worry as demonstrators, you know, oh, we shouldn't mix too many colors on the camera. What if somebody finds it boring? And yet, uh, one of our customers and new YouTube artists said, no, 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 no. We need to actually see the process of mixing the paint. How long does it actually take? This is not sped time. This is real time. Now I'm probably overdoing it, but I want to make sure that every little grain is broken up and when I go along the sides of my salsa cup with my stir stick, I'm looking to see if there's any grains that need to be broken down with that stir stick. Okay? This is actually quite gorgeous. Now this one I'm only going to add water to. Like I said, I don't really use pouring medium. I'm comfortable with how much water to put in my paint. And I also am, am not a believer in thinning it down too much uh, with too many additives because I want to keep the color brilliant and bright. Another reason why we don't need to thin it down. Um, other paints such as Liquitex, Golden, um, Gumbacher, um, Royal Talons, um, Windsor Newton, they have made their own pouring mediums. Just as Liquitex pouring medium goes with Liquitex Basics, they've made their own pouring medium. They know how saturated their colors are. They can recommend, oh, thin down my paint with 50%, thin down the paint by 70%, can thin down the paint by 90%. Well, when we started promoting the primary elements for paint pourers, we already had made a product called Vivid, okay? You're using the clear enamel to make your own paints, but the Vivid is a pre-mixed paint. You know, it's $14.99 a bottle. Seriously, if you're going to use our pre-mixed, we're happy to have you use it. You could simply thin it down with water and go but then you might go through this bottle in just a couple pours. What we're doing is we're showing you the more economical way of actually taking the color and mixing yourself. And by only using an eighth of a teaspoon, we've already given you the minimal color needed to make a beautiful pour or make beautiful paint for pouring and painting. There's no need to mix it with a tablespoon <laughs> And then you're thinning it down by 50% pouring medium. That's a waste. That's a waste of money, waste of time, and definitely waste of these precious little gems, primary element art pigments. So no need to thin these down like you would other paints because you're already using the minimal of color. And if you look, that eighth of a teaspoon made this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous cinnamon red. It's a red cinnamon brown. I'm going to add a few drops of water, mix it. Add a few more drops of water and mix it. And why am I doing it? Because the acrylic polymer, why am I putting a little bit in a time? Because the acrylic polymer and the color needs to have time to receive the water, okay? You don't want to pour a whole bunch in. It's like making gravy where you haven't mixed the flour and the butter together to make a roux and suddenly you're dumping in all the broth and the cream to make a sauce or that turkey gravy for Thanksgiving. Ooh, this looks like I'm getting a little messy here. I got some on my table. Give me a second, I don't want to keep 
keep transferring and I'll put paper towel on top of that so we can keep mixing. Still has a little bit of body to it, so I'm adding a few more drops of water. Now that has a nice even consistency to it. Beautiful consistency. Now you may be asking already, because you don't want to maybe watch me mix the next couple colors, do I use silicone in my mixes for my pores? Yes, I do. Okay. I have discovered the first silicone I had great success with was the WD-40. Sorry for the can. You can tell it's been well used. But it's a WD-40 that is uh, yellow and silver. And it says water specialist, water resistant silicone lubricant, multi-surface quick dry and protects against rust. This is the one you can get in the spray. It's got the little nozzle so you can put just a few drops in a cup. If you fold that nozzle down, it'll spray right into the cup. I also broke down and got myself this uh, microlubral micro 200 fluid silic silicone oil. This works quite nicely. I got this on um, Amazon and it's a great oil. Okay, it's really good for using for silicone for those of you that don't want to use a spray. Okay, let's mix um, another color up. And I think I'm gonna mix up some of this sky blue. Okay, I know we're still on close up, but you might as well see exactly what we're doing. So a heaping eighth of a teaspoon, it's basically almost a quarter teaspoon, put in my cup. Primary element, art pigments, sky blue. to start mixing. This color actually is more of a uh, tealy color, but I can tell from the camera. Sometimes camera reads blue, read blues, bluer, and greens, greener, and even teals will come across sometimes bright green in the camera. Can't explain it exactly why. Now, even though the sky blue is a finer grain, I'm still going to take the time to mix it. I'm going to go around the edges. I'm going to scrape the sides. I'm going to look to see if there are any grains on the side of the cup. You know, you, you've invested in this gorgeous pigment. You might as well treat it well and take the time to mix it. It surely helps by not putting the grains on the bottom first because I'm fairly confident that I'm not having to scrape up something from the bottom of the cup because I put the medium in the cup first. This one I'll put a little pouring medium in there for your pouring enthusiasts so you can see that dash again. And when I say I dash, just a dash. I don't even think that's a half a teaspoon. Just enough. I've put even just a teaspoon in an eight ounce batch. A little bit, a little dabble do ya on the pouring medium when it comes to mixing them with the primer elements. I'm mixing in that pouring medium so it bonds really well. Adding a little bit of water. That was almost a little bit too much water. It's going to take a little while to break that down. Got to be careful. Even though I can't get too ahead of myself and put in too much water at once. Like I said, this is one process you just can't really rush. And I really think the key to successful pours in any kind of painting, if you're going to mix your paint, it's all about paint mixing, the consistency of the paint mixing, how creamy, how much it flows. A little bit more water. tiny bit. It still flows, but I want it to flow just a little bit faster off the stick. 
This is really practice makes perfect. <clears throat> Eventually you will teach your hands to know the proper feel of the paint and just what it feels like when you're blending your stir sticks to it. There's stir, stir stick through the paint. There really is no rushing this process. I know people measure stuff out. The problem with measuring is I don't want you believing that you can just dump it all in a cup and go. It doesn't work that way. If you remember the beginning of this video, I talked about paint manufacturers and the rule of thirds. They mix their color within the third, first third of the acrylic polymer. They mix in more acrylic polymer and mix it again. And then if they're going to add any special little bling or burst, they put it at the end because they don't want the mica sheared at the end by the uh, blades, the double blades that they're mixing them with. So they, big paint manufacturers, even with all the equipment they have in the world, still mix a little at a time, allowing the polymer and color to receive and swell appropriately. Okay, now if I'm going to add um, uh, a spritz will do, or I have a little pipette. If I'm going to use the dimethicone, I have a little pipette. I pull up a little bit in the pipette, and I'm putting about three or four drops of the silicone oil in a cup. In the cup, squirt the rest of it back in my little treadmill oil container. And at this point, there's two rules of thought. Yeah, you want to mix it in. But if you over mix it, the belief is you're going to get smaller cells. So you want to mix it, but you don't necessarily want to beat it to death like we did when we were making the paint. That way you get some nice color, color separation when it's done. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you mix primary element art pigments with vivid clear enamel, a little bit of water, and just a dash of pouring medium if you feel you need the insurance. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for joining me. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.